Thank you, ma'am, for the generous introduction. First of all, on behalf of my colleagues, I would like to express my gratitude to Sasa Gawa Foundation for organizing this uh, program and also partner in the organizing is CII, Confederation of Indian Industries. We are here because of both of you. So thank you for a wonderful one big program which you have given to us. I also would like to thank all of you who have come here. I've been to Japan for quite many times, I think. But every time I come to Japan, almost a different experience which we interacted. This time we have been taken to many places which we see that not only the developed Japan, but also the quality of development, which is an eye-opening for all of us in India and especially to the Northeast. Our purpose of visiting Japan this time is specifically, we know that uh, India's policy is look is policy now been act is policy, and Japan's interest and Indian interest is the same. So the interest of India and Japan will not be completed without using Northeast as a gateway to the Southeast Asia. So we came here. We'll give a report. We'll have a meeting with our northeastern states. Because in India, it's not only the national government, we also have a state government that plays a very important role in terms of policies and decisions. So we'll be giving a report and advising the respected state governments how should we go about it and how will we move about it and our experience which have experience here. There's a proposal that uh, we should also bring the chief ministers, which we call chief minister here, called governor of different states in Japan, so they can see with their own eyes. We have a lot of similarities in terms of food habit, in terms of culture. Rather in the Northeast, you have eight states and multicolored, multiculture and so many tribes. You hear from my colleagues, everybody will talk big of their tribes. To invest in a country, you have to study the stability of the government. The India is possessing the stability of the government under the leadership of Narendra Modi. And for another 15, 20 years, the stability of India is very strong. The similarity between Japan and India is we respect the democracy, human rights, we have abide by the international laws. We have got the similarity, then why it is too late from the end of the Japan being one of the most developed country in the world for reaching northeastern part of India. I am inviting you without spending a single money, you will find the similarity of Japanese in Northeast. The food habit in the Northeast, the way of life in Northeast, the simplicity, simplicity of a human, you will find in the Northeast. And I was talking with Madam, we take maximum raw than the Japan, vegetable in raw, meat in raw. That's why my looks is also like Japan. <laughs> <laughs> so it is a very good beginning that politician to politician, business community need to meet business community. You have a lot of establishment and we are driving your vehicle in most of the part of the country. Whenever we go, we are trying to find out Japanese restaurant in mainland of India because Northeastern food habits 
is 99.9% similarity with the Japan. You are not going to face any problem in Northeastern states. Of course, Northeastern state was a landlocked state. Under the leadership of Narendra Modi, each and every state has got connectivity by air, by railway, by national highways, and three-star and five-star hotels are in, in different parts of the Northeast. Because Japanese are very disciplined in living, so you may require good conditions, well facilitated hotels that we are going to facilitate you as a tourist and as a businessman. Thank you, Madam Murayama Mayumi. My greetings to all my friends from Japan. I'm given to understand that there are business leaders, friends from the media, and people who are interested in a strong Indo-Japanese relation are here tonight. My greetings to all my colleagues from the parliament, from both the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha. I stand here representing not just 140 crore people of India, but I also come from northeast of India, which has almost five crore population. This five crore population, which is less than two, three percent of India's population, we enjoy around seven percent of the land mass of our country. So that needs to be understood. It also needs to be understood that we have only 32 kilometers of connection with the mainland India, but we have more than four and a half thousand of land border with countries like Nepal, Bhutan, uh, China, Tibet, China, Burma or Myanmar and Bangladesh. So you can understand our geographical location. And as Madam Mayumi has said, that the Indo-Japanese relationship went into cold storage for a long period of time. Despite sharing seven gods from our history and despite whatever you call the memories of war in the 40s, we were partner in arms. Since then, it has got into cold storage but we never had bad relation. We, have, we are always on the same side of the coin. We never in any international issues in the last 75 years were seeing eye to eye from opposite side. So that has to be understood from the first. Thanks to statesmen like Shinzo Abe, late Shinzo Abe son, whose visionary address to the Indian parliament in 2009 called the confluence of seas reignited Indo-Japanese relationship. My friends from Japan, it has to be understood that the Lukis policy of India framed around 20 years back and the idea of late Prime Minister Shinzo Abe of a free and open Indo-Pacific meets at a common ground. At that common ground is not east of India. And I am very happy that the Japanese government through Zaika has actually started investing and connecting with the people of Northeast India. I come from Assam, a lot of projects coming up as my team leader, Mr. Pala has said, 25,500 crores of investment. But investment should not be the only cornerstone of, of our relationship. It has to go from government to government, from business to business, for, to a people to people connect. I come from a very small state of Mizoram, sandwiched between Bangladesh and Myanmar. Myanmar, as you know, has been in a great deal of problem for the last uh, two years or so. The refugees have been pouring into our state from Myanmar to seek refuge and shelter there, and we have been accommodating them as much as possible. So our uh, Act East policy which has to be implemented through Myanmar also has come to a little bit of a problem now, but hopefully uh, this will be resolved soon. And also at the same time, uh, we are very happy to know that from my own state, even though it's a small state, population of just 1.2 million, uh, our young people, 
young people are so very keen to come over to Japan. Our Nazis have been coming over as health uh, caregivers to Japan and more are in the process of being trained and are being educated in Japanese uh, language. And for them, it is perhaps not too hard to learn Japanese language because I think uh, we belong to uh, many similar you know, backgrounds. Our looks and our food habits and our lifestyles more or less are the same. I also have been mistaken for a Japanese on several occasions when I uh, went abroad, then people have been saying, I'm a Japanese. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, I'm not. But uh, my people in the hills of Mizoram have been close to Japan in the past also since the World War II especially. Uh, our villagers have been helping out fallen pilots, in fact. They have been sheltering pilots who fell and who were victims of the war and they, they looked after them and uh, they sent back several of them to Japan. That's what uh, my people have been saying. And so we look forward to a closer cooperation with Japan and we hope that uh, things will really be uh, you know, geared up by the Japanese government and the companies uh, for further investment in, in Northeast India. And uh, let me also express my thanks to JICA for venturing into Mizoram and, uh, and investing in uh, road infrastructure as well as uh, health uh, healthcare. They, they are now helping us establish a cancer super specialty hospital and research center and also helping out in uh, agriculture and uh, irrigation uh, projects as well in my states. Japan has invested a lot in Northeast India, especially in Nagaland, I'd like to thank Jaika, because they are they're doing currently doing a biodiversity project. Also, not only on the infrastructure, but Sasagawa Foundation has come up and has done something which really resonates with the people. Uh, the narratives that they're taking out of, out of the Second World War experience of the locals there in Koima. So all these are very well appreciated by the people and I'd like to thank them. Northeast India is very rich in its resources. Also, as mentioned by my honorable colleague, 1.4 billion <coughs> democratic country, stable government. And the Lucas policy of Prime Minister Modi, it was, act is, earlier it was look is, now it is act is. After Prime Minister Modi came, it has been act is. <coughs> Northeast India is really developing. So we have connectivity, now we have a lot of development infrastructure taking place. And in this call for act is policy, Japan is the one country which has come forward in a good way, in a big way, investing in Northeast India. And I think the benefits will be there for all of us, both Japan and for India, because both for, Jap both for Northeast region and Japan, because I'd like to, we don't have friends representing Sikkim, Tripura, and Manipur. So just to give a small glimpse of the richness of the region, I'd like to read out something. This is a list of GI tags, which is, there are many which are in the process of being applied to, but then these are the ones that we have received GI tags for. Arunachal has GI tag for Arunachal Orange and the Idi Mishmi textile. So Assam has GI tag for their orthodox Assam tea, Muga silk of Assam, the Assam Karbiangong ginger, Tezpur lychee, Johar rice, Boga chow, Kachi nimu, Chowa rice, and Gamosa. Manipur has geographical tag for Shapi, Lampi, Wangkai Pi, Moirang Pi, Kachai lemon, Chakhao, and Chakhao is the black rice, and Judima wine, like your sake. Shapi Lampi and Moirang, yes. And in Meghalaya, Kasi Mandarin and Memung Naram in agriculture. Mizoram has GA text for the Maharam, Mizo Chili, Mizo Punchai, Ngothek, Podham, Dawai Lohan, 
and Nagaland has GA tax for Chakasang Chol, Naga Michi, and Naga Tree Tomato. So I'm just giving you a glimpse of the richness of the region. And particularly, the members of Sasakwa and the CIA. Thank you, everybody. <coughs> and I would like to thank the organizer for organizing this kind of event. And we could exchange our view. As we know, the friendship of India and Japan is not new. It has long legacy of good friendship. And we have been start, we have been doing in some years while we can help each other. We have come here and spent seven days. Today is the last. We visited Gunma area, the Kohama area, and this Tokyo winter Tokyo. And have a good opportunity to meet Japanese. I visited the traditional Japanese. Uh, where we had uh, Japanese food, traditional food. So every where, every time, I have observed uh, <coughs> Japanese peoples, uh, their situation, their mindset, and their politeness. Actually, I'm fascinated. So. Since I am a member of Assam and my colleague member from Assam and all of our colleagues, they have said the areas of topic where we had discussion with the Japanese government and uh, some organizations. So I think this kind of event could understand the situation where I can go. So, I would not like to prolong my speech. Uh, just I would like to request all of Japanese to come to the, our areas also. I am from Assam, bordering Bhutan. And my areas also so rich uh, in terms of culture. And my language is Bodo. And I am, uh, the Bodo language is Indo Bodo Tibetan group. Uh, my party is a small party, it's a regional party. And we had a uh, coalition government with NDA. It is led by Narita Modi. In Assam also, we have seven MLAs, one minister in Assam government here. We are doing well. And we have so many potentials. So if we collaborate in terms of technology, we can tap the possibilities where we can do. Uh, thank you, everybody. We submit once again. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it has been honor uh, about the Northeast part. Everybody has said, I don't want to speak about it. Honorable members have already spoken about it. I just want to say one word of uh, gratitude to Japan. The, you know, now these six members of parliament from India will be your ambassadors. The way you have treated them, that is the way, uh, you know, we are going to look at Japanese. And they will be your ambassadors, not just in North India, in parliament, and for India. And thank you so much to uh, Sasakawa Foundation and uh, uh, India Japan Association and uh, uh, all of you uh, and the government of uh, uh, Japan and all the uh, organizations we have met with. Thank you so much. <coughs> well, our memories will be filled with uh, joy, gratitude and a great learning that we will uh, implement in India. Look forward to more such uh, collaborations and uh, I'm sure, our, um, as I mentioned, our members of parliament will be ambassadors and we will be your ambassadors. Thank you so much. Well, thank you very much, uh, Madam Murayama, uh, honorable members of the parliament, and Bino Asad for your kind words. We um, appreciate the partnership that we have with the CII. Now, so we would like to move to the next session, um, next part of this evening, um, which is to enjoy the food and interactions. Well, thank you again for enlightening us on the diversity and the richness of Northeast India. Thank you very much. Thank you.